Guys, I didn't expect to come in here and catch a daggone five pounder. That might be the biggest one I catch all year. Might be a little work getting in here, but hey, once you're in here and the fish are biting like this, it makes it all worth it. <sighs> Joys of an old truck. There we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. I feel like I should have dressed warmer. It's only about 45 degrees today. It's overcast, there's a little breeze. It's not one of those picture perfect days you would hope to go fishing on, but we're doing it because we have limited time. Young Mitchell in the back there, following up in the rear. He and I are both taking on this adventure together. It's gonna be at least a mile back into the bush. We're dragging the kayaks back. We have a couple of carts. It's just a two-wheeled cart that you can strap to the bottom of the kayak. It's one of the great things about having a kayak is, you know, the weather is not really conducive to fishing, but you go and you can, right? So we're going into these back little lakes that you can't traditionally get a bass boat or a V-Hull boat in, you know? You can't get motor boats into these places. They're smaller bodies of water, so inherently they're gonna be warmer. We have a lot of emergent vegetation that dies in the fall and winter. That lays on the bottom. That soaks up a lot of sunlight, which in turn heats the water. This time of year, the warmer the water you can find, the more active the fish are probably gonna be. One kayak almost fully loaded. Two kayaks almost fully loaded. My tire looks flat. I think we're ready. We're gonna put some of these cameras away, lock up the pickups, and we are going that way. Into the woods, to the lake. Here we go. Oh, Mitch, help. Oh, I got it, I got it. And we're good. And we're off. Okay, see you later. Okay, bye. Oh my gosh, this is a mud hole. Keeping things pretty simple here. Just carrying a little tackle box with us. Have a few hooks, a few jigs, a few plastics. Um, kind of a variety of moving baits, horizontal baits. You can see we have a little wacky rig tied up here. That first bass we just caught right off the bank. That was on a little Terminator Pros jig. Um, so that's a good sign, right off the bank. I'm always a big proponent of, as soon as you get to wherever you're launching, just make a couple casts. You never really know what might be around before you actually put the boat in. Might give you a, an extra fish or two. So we're about to drop in here. I think I'm pretty ready to go. Put this nice and handily under my seat where it's an easy access. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We're gonna do this. We're gonna try not to tip, tip, tip anything over. Oh, there's one. Oh, got him. A large mouth. 
Starter fish on a jig. Okay, show's done. Let's go home. This is new to me anyway, I've never been here. It's 55 degree water. We have had rain the last two days, solid rain. It appears we have to fish a little bit slow. It's, it's still chilly. So I'm just dragging a little jig around and a little wacky rig. Just trying to slow down a little bit. The wind is out of the north, but I'm just sliding down this east bank, letting the wind do a lot of the work. It's like 10 miles an hour, so it's not that bad, but I'm just sliding in and sliding out using the power of the pedal drive to keep me the distance I want from the bank. And then I'm just letting the wind send me down the bank. Don't fight the wind. If you have to let the wind take you down, do it and then paddle back up. But in order to fish effectively, use a pedal drive to keep you pulled out or push you in a little bit as you go down the bank. Just, there's a bite right there. Oh, I missed him. Just little incremental adjustments. There he came back for it. And I'll always usually hit my pedal. I'm not dealing with big fish, but I'll usually, as soon as I set the hook, I'll usually engage my pedal system and start pulling myself away from the fish almost instantly. That way I get the most positive hook set that I possibly can. And you get them out of cover quicker. You pick up a little slack line. All those little things make a big difference when fishing out of a kayak. Change locations a little bit, snuck into a north bay, hoping for a little warmer water. Yeah, 56 now. Every degree helps for sure. If you're looking around for warmer water too, another good indication of some of the warmest water will be lily pads. Look, look out for lily pads. That can be a very good indication that, you know, you're in some shallow water, water that's warming up faster. That was a fish right there, darn it. A lot of times that can be a great place to either find springtime panfish or bass. There should be some more bass in here. That's a better fish. That's actually, I'm gonna go get that one because I threw it right by a big old log. Oh, and he's gonna get me in the log. Come on, stay on there. Come on. Come on, get out there. Get out of there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. There we go. Come here, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Come here. Come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come on, baby. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. Guys, I didn't expect to come in here and catch a day gun five pounder. Oh my Lord. Look at the size of that largemouth. That might be over five pounds, you guys. Holy cow. He came right out from under this log. Oh, what a beautiful fish. Wow. Probing around the shallows in the lily pad bays looking for warm water. That's just a little Z-Man zinkers right there. Look at that. Beautiful. 56 degree water. It was 55 out on the main lake. I'm gonna give her a little dunk. Mm. Wow, that is spectacular. Look at her one more time. Look at that horse. Oh, mean. Wow, that's phenomenal. Mm. That's a big bass. Wow. That might be the biggest one I catch all year.
this is a medium heavy powered action rod and i think this is a nice you know for the amount of cover that i'm dealing with and i, I want a little bit of to get them up and out of the cover that's part of the reason i'm also using uh, braid with a 10 pound floral leader um, this just gives me a little bit of invisibility and a little bit of stretch but honestly i could probably get away with straight braid in here a little bit bigger reel size you know this is like a 2500 size reel but um that's kind of my setup for just probing around just flipping and skipping wherever I need to around wood and lily pads and, and grass. Um, it's just a good little setup for probing around the shallows for largemouth bass. I watch him come and get it. Come here. Ooh. Just like that. Okay. Can't tell me he didn't want that. I am fishing it weightless. I could put a little, like a little tungsten in there in the one end and fish it a little faster and a little deeper. But right now I'm having so much fun up shallow. You know, I can watch these fish. They almost come sharky, sharking right toward the bait. You can see them just boil and pushing water as they come for it. So that's pretty, that's pretty darn fun. There's a lot of them in here. You just have to go through a few of them to get a nice one. That's okay though. I just love getting bit, especially in these little lakes like this. It is really a blast. I keep saying it over and over, but it is fun. Might be a little work getting in here, but hey, when you're, once you're in here and the fish are biting like this, it makes it all worth it.